Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So today I will show you how to create this really cool audio visualizer with Typeflow and 3 ds Max. You can use this method to create really different results and what is great is that this effect is based on the rhythm of the music you want and totally in 3D. You can really have the angle you want. Of course, you can find as always my project file with a complete 3D scene on my Patreon. Okay, now the tutorial. Let's go. Okay, so here's the music I choose with the duration that interests me. We can listen to a little music. Okay, perfect. The first thing to do is to export the song in the right format to be accepted by 3ds Max. So I will go in composition, pre-render, here, here point wave as export format, and select a path to save the file. Song complete and no render. Great. Okay, now what we want to do is separate the right channel from the left to have all the information for the creation of our effect. So we go to effect and stereo mixer. We have here the left and the right channel. I will now set to zero the two right setting to have only the left channel. And I will do as previously by exporting the song to a web file. Song complete left. OK. And render. Perfect. Now I will repeat exactly the same step but for the right channel. OK, so basically we have here three files. Our original file in web format which will allow us to import the music and play it in 3ds Max and the two separate channels which will allow us to have the necessary information for the creation of our effect. So now we can go to 2ds Max and we will first import our song. So to do that I'm going to click here on the curve and on sound and we will now add the file song complete. Perfect. I can now close the windows. I will just up a little my frames, maybe 500 and I will launch the animation. Listen. Okay, everything is good. We are the music. Now I will create a line which will be the basis for our effect and two spheres. Here and here. I cannot create a typeflow setup. Open editor. And I'm going to create a bro spline. Pick my spline. Change the display to sprite and the color to white. I will now up the amount of sphere by playing with the percent, maybe one. Perfect. I will now add a surface test. Add the two spheres. Just duplicate the display and link this new event to the surface test. And if I change the color to red, we can see the activation of the spline by the spheres. I will now add the force to see how she interacts with the setup. Decrease the gravity. OK. We see that our red particle also move. So to fix them, I will now add an object bind and pick the two spheres. OK, perfect. Now what I want is to bind all these particles to create an entire line, so I will create a particle bind. Enable bind to sibling. And we see that all our points are bind to their sibling. It's perfect. I cannot delete the force. And what I want now is to activate our line in the center. So I will now create another sphere here. I'm going to create another surface test. Select volume inside and pick my sphere tree. I cannot just duplicate the display, change the color. And if I link this event tree to the surface test, we can see here all the particles activated by the sphere. I will now create a force on this event. Set to turbulence. 
and if I up my strength value, we can see how the force affects the spline. Okay, so it's cool, but we don't want that the force affects the X and the Y axis. So I will go down in the tab and set the X and Y force to zero. Okay, it's perfect. It's basically what we want for this effect, but we don't want to control manually the force. So I will decrease the strength to zero. Select type low and open a track view. I open now the Tifle tab, same for the event tree and for the force. And we can see here the turbulence strength 1 and 2. Now right click on turbulence 1, assign controller, and I select audio float. I cannot choose my first song, here the left. I select left channel and I can up the oversampling and to finish up the max. Maybe 5. Okay, now if I play the animation, I see that the line react on the music. We can of course change the max value to increase the height, but 5 is good, I think. Now we will do the same operation on the turbulence too, but this time we will set up for the right channel. Mm, max to 6, and I can close. And now we can see by replaying that we have more variation. Okay, it's already good, but what we want is that the curve return to the origin when there are no sound, like a real visualizer. So, to save the line position data, we will now create a custom properties. Select custom TM and TM, and set a name for the channel position. I can now add a fine target in the event tree. Go down, and in point, I will select the custom TM and the right channel position. Ok, perfect. And now if I play, we see that it's starting to get close to our final effect. What we want now is to add more detail and variation, so I will go back in the force operator and really up the frequency and the scale. And I will do the same here with the second turbulence, but maybe not the same value than the first, to add a little variation. Ok, I will now launch the animation. Yes, it's better. But the result is maybe too slow and not dynamic enough, so to increase that, I will go in the force effect and really up the multiplier, maybe 700. And a little variation. Ok, good. And of course, if I up the force, I must change the fine target values too. So I up a bit the velocity and the acceleration. And now let's look at it again. And yeah, it's really cool like this. So basically you have to remember that you have to play with the force and the fine target to create the desired effect. If your curve show too high, you can just for example increase the fine target or decrease the force. You can of course decrease the stiffness and the particle bind to create a different result. The BIOS is already a good value to play with, to affect the way your line will look. Ok, perfect. So now what we want is to create the final spline, so I will add a spline pass. Create new. And for the mode we will select particle bindings. And as you can see here we have a spline that follow all particles. Ok, it works very well. I can activate the render of my spline. Maybe decrease a bit the radius, 0.1. Go to type spline and to have a more smooth look, I will now activate weight bindings. It's really cool like this, but it's up to you to see if you want to activate or not this setting depending on the look you want for your spline. I can up the step if I want to gain a more smooth look. Ok, let's see how it looks right now. Ok, it's really good. Now you have a lot of parameters to play with. You can increase the number of particles to change the look of your spline. 
You can also play with the binding of the particles, change the stiffness, and play with all the parameters I showed you previously to create the look you want. Or, and just so one last thing I forgot, to have a clean line on the side, don't forget to add a fine target and you can just adjust the acceleration, depending if you want or not that the line return quickly to the region. Okay, so now I will show you quickly how to duplicate and offset this effect. I will select all the layers and I put them in the layer group. Now I can just clone them and same step to have two different layer groups for each line. I can now just activate the line, select all the layers in the second group and just move them to place the line where I want. The last thing to do is to go to Typeflow 2 and just select the right type spline for the three events. Everything else is automatic. We can now just activate the two type spline and we can see here all two curves. And what we can do is to go into the force and modify the phase a little bit. Great. Okay, we can now run the animation to see the final result. And perfect. Okay, so we have exactly the desired result. Now all you have to do is to apply the texture you want and render. You can of course find a tutorial about that on my channel. And a really important thing, don't forget to export your final sequence in PNG because the pointer XR does not render well on this kind of line. Okay, so it's over for this tutorial. I hope you've learned a lot of things. Don't forget the thumb up and to subscribe if you like my work. You can find the final scene on Patreon as usual. And you can follow me on Instagram or Beyond if you want. See you soon for next tutorial, guys. Bye.